Wheeler Library Reads Aloud, Blizzard, by John Rocco. Monday. The first flake fell right before recess. It was followed by many, many more. The wind whipped up and school closed early. Yay! By the time my sister and I got home, the snow was already over our boots. The snow continued to fall through the night, and I thought it would never stop. Tuesday. The next morning, the snowdrifts were so high we couldn't open our front door. Be careful! So we went out the window instead. Woof! We laughed as we sank deep into the frozen powder. But walking was hard. It was like trying to move through white quicksand. Oof! Every few steps, I had to stop and rest. It was even too deep for our sled. We need sled dogs. When we went back inside, we were cold, wet, and tired. Welcome back, explorers. We made camp by the wood stove, and our feet tingled as we sipped hot cocoa made with milk. Wednesday. On the third day, Dad shoveled the driveway so he could get the car out when the snowplows came. We dug tunnels and secret rooms under the snow. An igloo can keep you warm in sub-zero temperatures. What's an igloo? Thursday. By day four, the plows still hadn't come. I wondered if we'd ever see grass again. Inside, things got tense as our food started to run out. I knew we couldn't survive much longer on cocoa made with water. We need to get to the store. But the roads aren't plowed, and we certainly can't walk through this. Friday. On day five, I realized it was up to me to take action. I was the only one who had memorized the survival guide. I was the only one who knew what equipment was required. I was the only one light enough to walk on top of the snow. Saturday. On day six, I made a list. Milk, bread, eggs, candy bar. I prepared the sled. Then I set off. My usual landmarks were covered by snowdrifts, but I managed to check in with the neighbors on my long journey. Candles. Cat food. Coffee. Okay. Peanut butter. Checked in with the neighbors. Helped build a snowman. Climbed a lookout. Went the wrong way. Made an angel. Explored an igloo. Joined in a snowball fight. I made it! At last I reached the store. I was tired, hungry, and chilled to the bone, but I couldn't think about myself. Are you going to carry this all by yourself? Yes, sir, I've got my sled. Yes, he's on his way back now. On the return trip, I raced to drop off the groceries before the sun went down. Wow! Grateful smiles and cheers gave me the energy I needed to make it back home. Meow. Woof! That night, we all had hot cocoa made with milk, and it never tasted better. It was a perilous journey, but there was something else we still needed. Sunday. Snow plows. It looked as though we would see civilization again after all. Guess we'll have to go back to school tomorrow. Boo. Thank heaven. I was going stir-crazy. We had survived the blizzard. The Blizzard of 78. On Monday, February 6th, 1978, New England experienced one of the biggest snowstorms in its history. It snowed for two days, and by the time it stopped, parts of Rhode Island, Massachusetts, and Connecticut were buried under 40 inches of snow. That's four times the height of this book. The wind was blowing 50 miles an hour and created snowdrifts up to 15 feet high. Where I grew up in Rhode Island, it took over a week for snowplows to get to our street. This book is based on my experience as a 10-year-old boy in that blizzard and how I got to the store over a mile from my house with tennis rackets tied to my feet. For Aliyah, who always wanted to hear stories about when I was little.